Welcome to the RV tour of the 1984 Bluebird Wonder Lodge. Trip yes. has the owner's manual we have the here. The owner's manual. We also have the blue box. Yes. When you buy 1984 or any Wander Lodge, mm -hmm. uh, having the blue box is very important. It's kind of a perk for yes. sure. So, all right, right now we're out here at Maris Adventure Park. You're going to learn more about that next in next weekend's episode and why we're out here. Here's what we want to do in this episode. Obviously, we want to do an interior walkthrough uh -huh. of what it looks like inside. So if you're kind of curious what the bus looks like, we'll give you the whole tour. We cleaned her up for you. Yeah. Yes. Trish uh, shares some organizational tips as you do in all the RV tour videos. Just a few. Mm -hmm. uh, we do an exterior walk around mm -hmm. of like the storage base, stuff like that. And then we also want to just chat with you about maybe pros and cons uh, and things, some things we've learned about having and owning a vintage bus as an RV. Yes. Okay. But first, yes. before we give you the tour, we want to just share with you like kind of maybe remind you what was happening in 1984. <laughs> Hello? Where is the beat? Point going, get comfortable, because we could be here a while. Camping out. Eddie Murphy is a Detroit cop. Jack Scarlett, touchdown Raiders! I don't believe it! Holy Toledo! A screen pass. <laughs> On vacation in Beverly Hills. I just got off the phone with Inspector Todd in Detroit. I'm not one to blow my own Vertuvian Fugan. <laughs> Tested by professionals and motorhome owners. Oh, it's dry. That's right. Okay, welcome to 1984, come on in. I guess we always wanna start in the heart of the home. And here, that is this kitchen. It is a lot of fun, everybody's together, but everybody is very close. <laughs> this rig was meant to lounge, hang out, have a conversation. So the front of the rig is the best part, hands down, but everybody needs a little utility, and that is what this kitchen is. The only gripe we might have is this hourglass shape. Right here, I can hardly fit inside. And guess where Charlie likes to sleep? Right here, which means every time you wanna go in the bathroom, it creates a little bit of a bottleneck. So we don't know exactly what we're gonna do, if we're gonna make a renovation, or if we're gonna keep it just the way that it is. But if we were to make a change, we would make this dinette cushion just a little bit narrower so that we can easier, it'd be easier to pass through this area because that's the bottleneck. Okay, so we don't think that you're necessarily shopping for a 1984 rig. Maybe you love Wander Lodges and you just want to see the layout and welcome. We can't wait to share it with you. Here are a few organizational tips for any RVer because we have been RVing for a while and there's some things to make your life easier. Um, just grab and go. So let me share some of those things with you. One of the things I really like are soft side containers. Soft side containers can go in any shape 
and they can get pulled out easily and you can throw maybe your clean dishes right in here and then put them away nice and easy. Or if you have certain things that you really love to bring outside, you just grab it and you can go. One thing that's super obvious but is also nice is stackable containers, things that can go inside of each other. So you're really using the footprint up instead of out because most of us don't have room to go out. Another thing I really love, soft side, but you can also, it's, it has a wire frame, so it keeps a certain form. And then, let's move that out of the way. A way to keep your silverware organized and not in a drawer is using a pen holder. And so that way you have your spoons, your forks, your knives, you can stack up your plates because there is that firm edge and you've put a lot of things in a small amount of space. Okay, Trisha's holding that one up because that has lost its function to stay up on itself, but normally they kind of, never mind couple things in your busiest workspace, and that's gonna be your sink. A collapsible dish tray so that you can continuously do your dishes and have them drying, air drying throughout the Show day. Show everybody how that works. So, oh yeah, this, this thing is super cool. We can't use this in the Airstream because we have a round sink. We have a round sink, but we're back to a regular sink and it collapses down so you can store it under your sink like this. I really want to talk about keeping your kitchen clean. It is so hard in a small space to keep everything disinfected. So I have regular cleaner, but then at the end of the night, I like to use a little bleach. Now, some people don't like that, so if you don't like this, just skip ahead. <laughs> but I like bleach. I feel like everything's nice and clean then. I spray everything down, I wipe everything down, and then I know I have a fresh start and I'm not, um, you know, introducing using germs from the dinner or the night before or whatever. I also put it inside my brushes because we don't have dishwashers. Well, maybe some of you do in a class A, but if you don't have a dishwasher or a way to get steaming hot water to clean those brushes that you're using on your dishes, to me, that can get pretty grody after a while. So I like a little bit of watered down bleach in a spray container. Um, we have these, and then what was the other thing I really wanted to share with you? Oh, these are so helpful. These are quart size containers. Um, if you buy anything commercially, usually you're buying it in this size and you'll be surprised when you make something, it will fit beautifully in here. Um, a half a cantaloupe cut up fits in here. That way I can have fruits and vegetables like ready on the go. I hand them out while we're driving. Then when I make, I always like to cook once, eat twice. That's my little saying. And so if I make extra meat, I can put them in here. I can throw them in the freezer. I have like I really do use these pulled pork. I, you know, make one, then the next day I have it for like salads to go over or lunches, really quick lunches. Um, but moving into this refrigerator, this is fantastic. Mark, you wanna talk about it? Tonight's ABC Sunday Night Movie will continue in a moment. There's a time to be funny. There's a time to be sexy. What, just now? There's a time to be deadly. Just tell me when. Sunday night, 10.30's time for... Magnum. Magnum! Magnum. Hawaii is his address. Trump is his business. Women is only weakness. Yeah, yeah. Tom Selleck is Magnum. Sunday at 10.30 on Channel 9. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. <laughs> gray poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. This is a 12 volt Dometic fridge. I'm gonna put the model right here. Uh, I think the price of this is right around, I'm gonna say $1,300, $1,395, something like that. And um, there are certain service centers that can install it. Of course. Amy and Joel, they installed their own. So it is possible to do this yourself, but it doesn't take any propane. So this is a 12 volt fridge, which means you don't need big fancy batteries and an inverter. It'll run off your 12 volt system. Right here is our GX50. And it tells us how much we're bringing in. It's pretty late in the day right now. So we're only bringing about 250 watts of solar. And uh, between, well, you can't get a reading of what we're bringing in because of the 250 watts of solar. But when everything is off at night and this is running, it's drawing about 50 watts. So. We're loving this fridge. Um, you know, it stays on when we're driving down the road. And 
since we've gotten this in the bird and the airstream we have not lost any groceries typically uh, because we're going to turn off the propane fridge while we're driving when we get to where we get wherever the destination is sometimes we'll forget to turn the fridge back on and we'll lose all of our groceries or maybe just because propane fridges aren't very efficient <sighs> You lose your groceries because of that. So every once in a while, every once in a while. So this has been an awesome fridge. A lot of people have said, "What's the update on the fridge?" Two thumbs up. Okay, but that fridge right there takes the same amount as this computer. Totally. Is that not the coolest thing ever? Yeah. Now, if you do have a Wonder Lodge, we had some doors right in here that we removed to make it a little bit wider. Uh, and you're wondering if it fits. It fits perfect. We did no modifications to this, and the handles are right here. It gets in. The only thing we did is just change it from a a right hinge to a left hinge. And as you can see, no issues. I'm a little light on my groceries right now. We're boondocking yeah, we're and them. we've really and gone through it, them. This fridge kind of sits out a little bit. So in the Airstream, we were worried that it was gonna like stick out too far in the hallway. Not an issue. Boom, 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 boom. That is awesome. Woo! That is, wow. that is really cool. It is really fridge. cool. And the bird, not an issue. All right, Trish, show everybody these closets in the bathroom. Welcome to I Love Lucy. <laughs> we have separate beds. Not my favorite situation in the whole world. I enjoy a good snuggle, but um, it is babe. it is pretty nice because I do have my own set of covers and it's getting colder. And I have like <laughs> twice as many covers as Mark does. He comes and sees me in the morning. I'm like underneath. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's amazing. It's totally amazing. So anyway, we have separate beds. We have storage. They thought of everything. There's like um, there's radio up here. Mm -hmm. We have our own reading lights. We have that in the Airstream too. It's so funny that we have two of the most classic RVs. Mm -hmm. And so we absolutely love them. But in here, I have more soft storage. Mark has hard storage. I don't know if it's clean. No, it's not really it's clean. It's not really clean. <laughs> but we have some hard storage. Um, really just measuring that. The funniest thing is if you're like, I bought my rig. I've bought sewer connections. I'm done spending money. You can use shoe boxes for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. You can go to the dollar store. This doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing inside of every single rig. Although if you can find those rope baskets um, anywhere cheap, they're really great. So let me show you my closet. Oh, I got a couple things I want to say about here. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, a lot of people have asked, what is it like having the twin beds? And although, as Trish said, it's not ideal, there is a huge advantage that I had no idea about until we got it. And that is, it added about five more feet to our RV. And so if you're a little short on space, a lot of people like with an Airstream, Airstream still offers a twin bed as an option. And then like the 25 or 27 foot rigs, it's we can now walk all the way to the back to the rig. So I can now get dressed here and I can use all this storage. If this was a queen bed, not only is it difficult to make, but I'm always kind of like walking around it and stuff like that. So um, we have enjoyed the extra space. And then the other benefit is it's like we have two couches in here. So often Trish and Caleb will be back here. They'll be reading um, or I could take this pillow over here and the views out the back window I can move my pillows and I can sit up against that wall and that's been kind of cool so there are some benefits I don't know if this is the best full-time setup but if you're going out for the weekend and things like that and you want to maximize your space it's been pretty good and then for you Wander Lodge folks out there you probably already know this because I'm the newbie to the Wander Lodge community but um, these lights right here that's an LED light look at this thank you Larry because he told me about that and so I went to Amazon and promptly got the LED version. These were previously halogen. Uh, not only were they drawing a lot of um, amperage, but they were also really hot. Okay, so we have three of Hold these. on, tell everyone, let's see what happened. What? 1984 and the light goes on as soon as you oh, open the door. Oh yeah, look at that, look. <laughs> Boom! I still have my summer remember list there. I love looking at those memories. Um, of course, we have our command strips. Mm -hmm. I like in Mark's closet, how it has the rubber, because yeah, then things don't my, fall off. That is my are... favorite command strip right there, because yeah. nothing, no towels fall off. Right. That and is... notice the full length mirror. Full length mirror, how fun is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, then in here, in here, here, we have like a, a real closet. So normally in the Airstream, I use these really skinny hangers. They're really lovely and they're velvet so things don't fall off. But they are a struggle with a lot of your clothes because yeah. they're like, get on. No, I don't want to. <laughs> um, so anyway, so I have some regular hangers, but here's my clothes. We have shoes down below. Normally I have two big containers right here filled with shorts and with t-shirts, but we've moved on to seasons, mm -hmm. different seasons. So anyway, but we have three of these closets, mine, Mark's, Caleb's. How fun is that? 
Okay, this is where I spend most of my time, and quite frankly, it's really comfortable. Um, we bought this bus from Missy and Bunny. I don't know if you saw that episode. If not, you gotta go back and watch it because it was a lot of fun picking up the bus. And the owners prior to them, uh, out in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, changed all the Route 66 upholstery, which is really great. They did it everywhere. But the thing I wanted to comment about is how wonderful let me turn that off how great of a job that they did choosing the foam it's really like it's so comfortable it doesn't get matted down and i can really sit here and edit videos for hours i sit right here and it's got this it's got this um soft little edge like this that i can put my hands on and i can look out the window and look at the trails out here at maris which you're going to learn more about with the awning it's fantastic it, it really is wonderful and so that's where trish and i are really torn if we do a renovation over time it works so well and if it's not broken why fix it and so i feel like we just we're still deciding exactly what do we want to do on the inside of the bus because it works welcome to the coffee bar love this how cool is this i think that it's supposed to be like a bar bar but um, <laughs> for us it's a coffee bar and it's just easy access to things these things kind of scoot around that's another thing using baskets to contain certain areas to designate certain spaces is really helpful in an rv um, and here we have the luxury of space i wouldn't assume that most people would have this much space but we luckily do in this rig so we have coffee we have cups i have my whole little workstation we have a coffee maker an air fryer this thing has been a game changer but this is also where we throw everything down and we have just a space that's totally contained because as you can see there's a little lip right here um so things aren't flying around everywhere when we're driving under here is a you full, can show them well it's a hot mess that's all right there's a vacuum want to know. How did, what does it look like no, it's a, no. <laughs> no nobody it's wants not to see bad no it's got a vacuum Cool. It's got the Instapot, it's got okay. some heaters. But they have these really cool airline type latches. <laughs> it does feel like you're in an airplane. It feels like I'm in an airplane. So I kind of feel like a flight attendant when, mm -hmm. we, when we're underway and I'm bringing people things and drinks and things like that. So um, anyway, but this is an amazing storage area. So, and then again, they have more storage over here, another little credenza. That's one thing that makes this feel more like a home and a lounge than an RV. So again, this is our absolute favorite space. You can fit like six people up here comfortably. That turns around with extra muscle <laughs> and um, there's a little spot there. So you really have this like social area. That's a lot of fun. So Caleb and I, we were in Washington, D.C. We went out and we got this TV. Apparently 27 inch TVs are uh, kind of a thing of the past. Maybe like the, the, maybe they're in the area where we get a fax machine or something because yeah. every oh, TV right is like that big. Um, I was going to mount it to the wall, but it had two legs and it works just great. And then we got a sound bar. Um, we tied that in. This is kind of a smart TV. We tie this in to hold on our um, hotspot. We've got a couple different hotspots, but this um, night get at t net gear we really like. This is the Nighthawk and we tie in the TV and all the stuff to this thing. And that way we can just turn it on and we can stream Amazon, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, so Caleb keeps his Xbox down in here, which is really cool. And it just works out really great. I think the thing we like the most about the bird is just this, the fact that Trish is over there and I'm here. Trish is right. We've had six people in here having a conversation. It's very comfortable. And I think the thing we've enjoyed the most about class A life or motorhomes is the fact that we don't have to put anything away. The air fryer, the coffee maker, they stay there. The Berkey as we're driving down the road, it stays put. So, and because we don't have any slides, um, and at the moment we don't have any uh, hydraulic stabilizers that's on our list to get fixed. Um, so we just like parked in here, we just parked level. Um, there's really not a lot to do and it's time to go. I disconnect the electric water sewer and um, You're starting fire to sound like, you're starting to sound like a real class A. starting to sound like a real class A. Yeah, yeah, just a yeah. push of a button and, and you're gone. No, done. I, mean, I will say the, the whole push of a button in a class A, I think that's somewhat of a myth because we still have a tow vehicle. Um, there's still stuff to do. But the, and I've said this before, the um, emotional, um, what, what, what did I call it before? Like the emotional checklist of the things that you have to do feels less in a class A than it does in maybe like a fifth wheel or a towable RV. But with some experience, very little. I think it's, I think it's mostly in our head. So I think that this sticker is really funny. It says no puffin please, but there's <laughs> probably like three places to light a cigarette in here. <laughs> so I think it's really funny. All of this was redone, which is really cool. It's a little shower curtain. This has tremendous 
pressure, which it's is such a great shower head. Fabulous. And this, it doesn't use very much water either. It doesn't. And this 1984 bus, this is before there was any kind of precaution with scalding your skin. So mm -hmm. it gets so hot. I come out like a lobster and I don't mind at well, all. Well, tell them where tell them where lukewarm is and tell them where scalding is on the on the It's dial. like one yeah. eighth it's of like an inch. Lukewarm. It's like, Scolding hot. It's lukewarm. So you scolding. like you play with it the whole time you're doing it. So anyway, but I love how the mirrors you can if you're tall, you have a mirror. If you're short, you have a mirror. Um <laughs> height challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, but you have great lighting in here. There's a there is a window. Yep. There's places for things. I think the most hilarious thing is that this does not fall when we're Isn't under it amazing. Wind. It's it crazy. Does, it stays here the entire time. That's nuts. But we have, you know, the typical sink. We have this. It is a little light on storage. So these just open up like that. And then there's the toilet paper down there with brushes and things in here. Mm -hmm. But um, by comparison to some of our other rigs, this is actually very light on storage in the bathroom, which I find kind of funny because everywhere else, tons of storage. Why don't you share with everyone that if you're tall, how the drops, how the shower drops down. Oh, okay. Here's a little step. Yeah. How cool so is that? So you can down. really, it's like, just tiny trash. <laughs> look, you can be really tall. And That's then what do you have here? Too. This is new. You don't have this in any of the other rigs we've done. So no, what is this? this is from Target. Um, you can get the, I have one from Amazon, so we'll link mm -hmm. that for you. Um, that was really helpful, but I didn't have an address and I needed one of these. So I went to Target yeah. and you screw these on to suction They're cup. really tight. They're really tight and, mm. and none of the stuff seems to fall when we're underway. How shiny can Mr. Clean leave your no wax floor? So shiny, you might think it's wet. Oh, it's dry. That's right. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, hold tight a little longer, be close a little longer, longer with Big Red. That Big Red freshness messes right through it. Your fresh breath goes on and on while you chew it. Say goodbye a little longer, make it last a little longer. Keep your breath long, last be fresh. Okay, let's talk about driving this bus. I slide over here, I really enjoy it. I really do. Now, okay, in full transparency, it has its moments. I think I said to Trish a few days ago, I think every rig we've ever owned, I've loved it and I've hated it. There's always something about the rig that will drive you crazy and then there's probably something about it that led you to purchase that type of RV. I love the classic feel. I love that it's nostalgic. I love the way it sounds. I like driving it. I like that it's comfortable. I like that the windows open up and I can talk to people here. All right. There's just there's so much I love about it. It's so slow. It's so incredibly slow. Um, so under here, under here is a Caterpillar 3208, which is not known for speed. Some of them are turbos. This one is not, and uh, it just doesn't have a lot of horsepower. And the slightest grade, and we go down to under 40 miles per hour. And you know, under 40 miles per hour on a on an interstate, you're in the way. I, I love when you get these slight grades like this. That there's three lanes. Yes. So we're not holding people up. And that's kind of my saving grace for California is I'm hoping that the big grades that we're going to be going 20 have it's three lanes. 20. Are you dreaming? Well, oh, we're yeah. going to be going 11. No, Maybe. that was extreme. Those were extreme conditions. California's grades are way bigger than Georgia. I know, but we're going to be sticking to Route 66 as close as possible. Um, there's some things that we've learned to do to improve it. I was initially looking at power upgrades, but I'm, you know, we're just not sure yet. We like the bird because we like to take it to events. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to share. It's fun to wave at people as we drive down the road. Um, it's not incredibly practical if it was your only RV. So the Airstream is something that we'll be using on an ongoing basis. It's like our go fast, go far RV. If we want to go to Florida or Maine uh, or up in the West Coast, and we've got some national parks this coming up season that we want to visit like Olympia and Rainier. And so for that, we'll be using the Airstream. Um, so if you're thinking about a classic bus, it's been a lot of fun. We enjoy it. We enjoy the whole experience about it. But if it's your only RV and you're thinking about going and exploring the national parks, there are some things to consider in terms of power, reliability, and things of this nature. But the fun factor is an absolute 10. So I was cleaning up recently and I was trying to like scrub the threshold to kind of just clean it up a little bit. And I discovered the coolest thing. 
right here, it says 12, I think that says 20, 83. So I'm assuming that this came off the factory line in 83. How fun is that? Oh, that is really cool. It's like my little Easter egg or Christmas present since <laughs> it was 12. <laughs> Let's do a quick exterior review. I wanna talk about the awning and I wanna talk about the storage bays and then of course the solar and batteries. First thing, Zip D. We have this almost identical setup on the Airstream. I love them. They can handle a little bit of wind, which is what I like, versus the electric, like even right now, might be too much for it and we can leave this, this open. But as a KYD PSA, always put your awning with awning in before you leave. So anyway, this is in caravan mode. Um, as you can tell, it's not completely extended out and it doesn't have like the middle bar, but this is, this is how we use it most of the time because it's just simple. All right, let's talk about the bays. This is our barbecue bay. The bay comes up and there's a little chain right here. And it just goes like that and it's simple. Um, this is kind of the stuff that I just really like. I like that it's simple and it works and it's reliable and I never have to replace it. I don't have to service it, I don't have to change it. That's the stuff that you can just kind of fall in love with, classic things like a bird. Regarding these bays, they're a little shallow. They're about 16 inches high. Um, that's kind of a drawback because there's stuff I would love to put in there that I can't fit. But the flip side to that is that the bird is only 11 feet, five inches tall, which means we can go through Chicago, the start of Route 66. Um, we don't have to worry so much about low clearance bridges being 11.5, and that's probably because of these storage bays. The newer Class A's got, the bigger the bays got, the taller they got, next thing you know, you're 13 feet high. You gotta really watch those low clearance bridges. This right here is the propane tank. Oh, <laughs> And wait. Charlie's. Oh, and Charlie? Hi, Charlie! So this is where the propane tank goes. I'm gonna, uh, here's a picture of what the old propane tank looked like. Um, turns out it's actually pretty difficult to get an new old propane tank. So we decided to go propaneless. Um, and then we're kind of thinking about maybe putting like a Dometic cooler on a slider right here. And um, I wish I could show you the generator, but somewhere along the way, I think I hit something. I think I hit a cone or a curb or something and it bent this shaft over. So in order to get this generator out, I have to unclip it like this, which I currently can't do. I air up the bus and then there's a button. Let me show you. There's a button right in here and I just flip this switch, flip the switch, and this thing comes flying out. This right here is our tow vehicle setup, and this is the Roadmaster, and it is a great setup. We really like it. It's very simple, it's very quick, very reliable, we've had no issues. We have had some slight issues with the Invisibrake braking system, so I think next time, um, you know, we did that because we wanted to have braking on our tow vehicle if we were gonna be gas or diesel, because we didn't know when we installed it. Knowing that I'm diesel, I probably would have done Air Force One or um, I would have done stay and play. But the Invisibrake braking module has been finicky and kind of clunky. So not too happy with that, but the tow bars are fabulous. And I don't know if you can tell, their tow bars light up LED. Everything's a little dusty right now, but they light up LED at night. So when your running lights are on, this whole system is lit up. That's so someone doesn't think they pass the bus and then they'll just go behind the bus and then whoop, there's a tow vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. So they can they can see. Okay, let's talk about some of the solar that's on the roof and the, the power setup we've got. Up on the roof is 1200 watts of solar. There are four panels, 300 watts each, installed by Future Solutions out in Elkhart. And then in the RV, if you saw our solar video, if not, I'll link it right here, is four Battleborn GC3, the Game Changer 3 batteries. Each of those batteries is 270 amp hours. So all together, that's 1,080 amp hours. And then for the inverters, there's two 3,000 watt inverters running in parallel. That is a ton of power, and we did that because A, we wanted to run both air conditioning units while we are driving down the road because we don't have a working generator. Uh, we also wanted this rig to be out at spots like this, and we wanted it to be used for events. But a lot of people ask, um, where should they start when it comes to solar? This is our fourth solar install, and when we started, we started really, really small. Our advice is to, if you get a new rig, go out and use the rig. First, make sure you actually enjoy the rig that you have and then evaluate how often are you dry camping? How often is that generator actually running? And are you being a nuisance to the people around you? Like have the need and have the pain first because if you were to buy a rig and just do a huge solar install and then you're six months down the road and for some reason you thought, geez, I think maybe we should change rigs, that would be good to know. So use the rig, understand your habits, and then you can start building a system that's gonna be right for you. You can call the guys at FSI, 
I know they'll help you work it off, uh, work out the type of system that's gonna be right. Um, the other thing is that's nice about like solar and lithium is that you can add on. You can start small and then you can very easily add more Battleborn batteries down the road. You can easily add um, more solar panels. Just make sure if you're not gonna do it yourself, make sure the installers are gonna use the correct gauge wire so that it is scalable. Let them know that, hey, we're starting here, but I wanna have the capability to go more so they use the proper gauge wire and that they set things up in such a way that it is actually scalable. So just a couple tips on that. We've done a bunch of installs, so just if you type into YouTube KYD Solar, you'll see all of our installs, but we'll link down that down below. Storage bay is just basically oil, chemicals, chains that I hope to never use, you know, simple green and cat oil and, and, and all that fun stuff. But let me show you these tires because I really like these tires. Okay, so, you know, back in 84 on a bus like this, um, these are semi-truck tires. They're 22.5, 11Rs. And uh, it needed new tires when we got it, so we replaced the tires with Toyo because at the time we couldn't even get Michelin. I could have got Continental, but not at the, not at the shop I was at. So um, I did some research and found that Toyo, the M154, seems like a good tire. Uh, I think I paid $3,500 for all six, which for a tire of this size, that's a pretty good deal. And um, I, know, I just love them. I mean, they're just, it's just nice to have a nice, big, solid tire. I like the wheel wells and that, you know, that's where like kind of the love affair with the RVs comes from. It's just the, like the way it looks. And then last, this is just the chassis batteries right here. So those are the batteries that started up and then all the Battleborn that we have is in the back that goes to the panel and that just runs it separately. So these were new batteries and ugh, not much to say about that. If ever you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Discount Tire Company. Okay, let's wrap this up. It's kind of cold out here. <laughs> so, I'm like a we, chilly. we said that we were at Maris Adventure Park, and we're going to share more about why and what's going on next weekend. You know, when we find an environment like this, we double down on videos, yes, pictures, and all, which is gorgeous. It's so much it's fun gorgeous. to be here. Yes. Uh, okay, you wanted to chat about pros and cons of having a vintage rig. There's some things I just think that you should know if you would ever consider getting into an older RV, not mm -hmm. necessarily a Bluebird Wander Lodge, but just a vintage RV from anything. Yes. And that is that they are fun. They are nostalgic, uh, kind of what I was saying in the driver's seat. They're, uh, I, I love everything about it. Yes. Okay? But there's some things you have to know. You know, they're not overly expensive to buy, depending on what, you know, how well it's kept and things like this, but it could very well be the most expensive RV you've ever owned because of, you know, maintenance, maintenance and service and repairs. And I think if you were uh, looking to get into an RV, it would be very attractive that you can get an older RV for cheaper, but I think you've got to look at the total cost of ownership. Yes, right? absolutely. And, and so, you know, our videos, we want to share like tips and we want to share things about the family. We want to share things on the destination. And sometimes we want to like do cinematic stuff. I don't want anybody to get like swept up into the music. <laughs> That's, of... I was just going to say that. You can throw music with anything <laughs> and make it seem epic. Yeah. So um, we joke that, you know, we're ready to rock and roll. And maybe one day the bird's going to be like, not today. <laughs> Yeah. So we always kind of have our fingers crossed that she starts up mm -hmm. and that she makes it. And she has. She's done an amazing job. But with a vintage rig, that's one of the things that you have to consider every time you're ready to go on a trip is how is this going to roll today? And when we have a towable RV, you kind of know what your truck is mm -hmm. up to because you're using it usually on the day-to-day -day and you're taking care of it. So you're like, you hook it up, you make sure your tires are good, and you're rolling. You're ready to go. And with a Class A that maybe is a little bit older, you have to consider the fact that you're going to have to warm yeah. it up maybe a few days before, make sure everything's going okay, and um, make sure that you know somebody that can work on a rig like That's this. That's true. It's been hard mm -hmm. for me to find people. Like, I'll go into a dealership and they'll say, hey, look, we're a cat dealer, but we don't have anybody here that knows the 3208. And so that's right. that's kind of an issue. They've all retired. They've all retired. <laughs> and uh, the other thing I'll say about it is that when you have an RV, vintage RV, or even really a big Class A, mm -hmm. or a big rig in general, you put a lot of, there's a lot of attention and focus on the RV. So mm -hmm. the experience has a lot to do with the RV. And maybe you want to be focused more on Glacier National Park. Maybe you want to be focused more on spending a three day weekend out camping with your family. And when you have a rig like this, you're thinking about this rig quite a bit. And that's just something I want to make sure people are aware of. You're thinking about, like Trish says, we're kind of partial to towable 
because our truck is fairly reliable. Well, it's very reliable so far. Mm -hmm. And when we're ready to go, generally speaking, the Airstream's ready to go. That's right. You check the tires and you're ready. A motorized <laughs> RV, when you're ready to go, you better go check it about a week or two before to make yes. sure it's ready to go because it might need some service. Mm -hmm. And so these are just things we wanted to make sure that we were balancing out. And you're thinking about video. storage and you're thinking those kinds of things. Yeah. So um, while it's super fun and it creates great conversations mm -hmm. along the way, um, and of course we've, got, we've gotten to meet so many great people because of it, yeah. um, it's just something that you will want to take into consideration is that total cost of ownership. And we always say, start small, start now. So whatever you can do to get out mm -hmm. there and start making memories, maybe you throw a tent in the back of your car, maybe you have a small towable, maybe you have a tier drop maybe you have a gorgeous class a wherever you're starting from getting out there and carving out that time with the people that are most important to you that is what's amazing and then you'll learn when you're out there what you really like and don't like and right. maybe your second rig will be like just a little bit better mm -hmm. and then you can and then you can really kind of get it dialed in and we yeah. think that's really important just start just get going find something to get going and make some memories and then and then improve from go there. from there and i suppose what you were saying about how fun this has been i mean if you know the, the the flip side to this is that if you aren't dependent upon going a thousand miles somewhere this is a conversation starter let me tell you something if you <laughs> want to meet friends on the road <laughs> you get you, you go get drink. an old anything yes. and 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 maybe bring the beer and you mm -hmm. have conversation all night long you'll have friends <laughs> everywhere you go <laughs> Anyhow, so that's it for this tour and a little flashback to 1984. Um, we're having a blast out here. There's so much more content that we want to share with you out here. And then, of course, we're, we're also having a blast going down Route 66. Yes. Well, and a little Easter egg. Mark's mom was in that montage in some of her commercials. Oh, yes. That's right. Yes, yes. So. All right. So that, um, that wraps up this video. We're glad you're here. And we will catch you in the same location next Sunday. Bye for now. That concludes this RV tour of our 1984 Bluebird Wonder Lodge. We're excited to get back to travel videos starting next week. The modern tourist must make a choice pre or post 1937. Join us right here at Mayoris Adventure Park next week for some off-road excitement. As Trish and K-Love get behind the wheel, then we make our way to the Big Texan and Mark and K-Love take a shot at the 72 on stage. Is this live? I was there for every bite. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned for more Route 66 episodes from New Mexico, Arizona, and California. No, I'm getting off. I can't do the freeway. Sorry. I'm Gary, the Gemini Giant, wishing you smooth roads and fast Wi-Fi.